Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech News for Friday, October 9th, 2015. On September 30th, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas stated in his annual General Assembly speech at the United Nations that there is no reason that Palestinians should remain faithful to the Oslo Accords as long as the Israelis were not. Mr. Abbas accused Israel of having violated the pacts which formed the basis for a two-state solution in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the Palestinian territories. Well, that was apparently a shot heard throughout the Holy Land, as ever since then, tension and violence has increased, particularly among Palestinian teens and 20-somethings. On October 3rd, a Palestinian man fatally stabbed two Israelis and seriously injured a woman and toddler as they walked in Jerusalem. A few days earlier, suspected Palestinian gunmen killed an Israeli couple in front of their children as they drove in the West Bank. A Palestinian teenager stabbed a 15-year-old Israeli before being shot dead by Israeli officers. And today, it's reported that Palestinian students have been brazenly throwing rocks and rolling flaming tires at Israeli soldiers. Mohammed Zeed, one of the activists at Burzit University near Ramallah, said, We feel the intifada has begun. This is a letter to our political leaders. We don't want submission, which is what they think peace is. Intifada means to shake, though it is popularly translated in English to mean uprising resistance or rebellion. In a sad and nearly humorous quote illustrating the perpendicular nature of young Palestinian lives, a 21-year-old engineering student said, I'm ready to give my life for Palestine, but I have a class I can't miss today. And speaking of intifada, the Arab Spring of 2010 is definitely one of those. The Nobel Peace Prize has been awarded to, a, to four organizations making up the National Dialogue Quartet in Tunisia. The Tunisian General Labor Union, the Tunisian Confederation of Industry, Trade and Handicraft, the Tunisian Human Rights League, and the Tunisian Order of Lawyers. The Arab Spring originated in Tunisia but quickly spread to other countries in North Africa and the Middle East, said Casey Coleman Five, the chairwoman of the Nobel Peace Prize Committee. She went on, in many of these countries, the struggle for democracy and human rights has come to a standstill or suffered setbacks. Tunisia, however, has seen a democratic transition based on a vibrant civil society with demands for respect for basic human rights. Right on. After devastating heavy rains in South Carolina earlier this week, that water continues to form lakes and rivers where there weren't any last week, flooding farmland as well as residential areas. Many peanut and cotton crops are not likely to survive, and preliminary estimates show crop losses could total more than $300 million as residents continue to boil water for consumption and more rain is predicted for the weekend. The U.S. has been identifying and training troops in Syria in an effort to build a rebel force to combat Islamic State for years, but that effort ends today as President Obama acknowledges the failure of its $500 million campaign to train thousands of fighters. Senior officials at the White House and the Pentagon said the strategy to pull fighters out of Syria, teach them advanced skills, and return them to face the Islamic State had failed in part because many of the rebel groups we're more focused on fighting the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad. President Obama is visiting Roseburg, Oregon, but he isn't expected to talk about gun control anymore while he's there. After his passionate speech following the shooting at the community college there, many residents have been loudly voicing their opposing opinions. Douglas County, Oregon is filled with gun owners who use their firearms for hunting, target shooting, and self-protection. It seems that a commonly held opinion in that area is that the solution to mass killings is more people carrying guns. A pastor at one of the churches in Roseburg said the fact that the college didn't permit to anyone to carry guns there, there was no one there to stop this man. Donna Blanchard, Think Tech News. Happy Aloha Friday, everyone.